All right, let's talk a little bit about data frames. We learned in a real quick and dirty fashion how to load some data up into R and it spat the data out at us as a data frame. So if you want to get good at this, you're going to have to be real comfortable working with data frames. Let's go ahead and load that STD data from last episode back in here and take a look at it. Now, as we mentioned previously, we've got four columns. We've got 52 rows. You'll notice also that R prints out when it gives output to the terminal, the row number that you're at. Uh, this is, in our case, not terribly interesting until you get past 19. You'll see that the 20th row is the 19th rank because the U.S. total isn't ranked overall. In other cases, that may be a useful point of reference for you. Um, one property of data frames that we've just discussed now and you may wish to get at without having to hand count or know from previously is the dimensions of the data frame which we obtained by running the DIM function on it and that will give you in order two numbers the first is the number of rows the second is the number of columns now I told you this had 52 rows looks like it has 51 when we ask R that question and that's a distinction worth making that first row is the names of each column R doesn't count that as part of the data it counts it separately as what it calls call names and COL NAMES is a function that we can run on our STD data and take a look at oh, if we can type correctly and take a look at what the column names are so those are important when we're dealing with data frames. These are going to be the, uh, the variables that we have within our data. Each row in our data set should be an observation. Each column should be a variable. That's a pretty standard layout technique. You're going to see that across a variety of disciplines. We have rows of observations and columns of various variables for each observation. So in this case, each state constitutes an observation. All right. So you can index data frames a few different ways. One particularly easy, useful, and intuitive way is to do it by the names of the columns. So let's say I just wanted to see the number of cases in each state or I wanted to perform some operation on that number of cases. What I would do is I would call up STD data, which is our data frame overall. And then I would use the dollar sign and I would use the name of the column I want to look at. In this case, it's cases. So I did CA and I'm going to go ahead and hit tab. It'll autocomplete. So STD data dollar sign cases will give me 51 values in the order they appear in that table. Now that's relatively context free information. It's not all that useful for looking at, but if I want to run an operation, uh, take an example of it, look at some things, that is the way to do it. So uh, let's say that I'd like to visualize this. I'm going to cheat ahead a little bit. We're not doing a lot on graphing and plotting yet, but this hist function will give us a plot. So if I run hist on that data above, hist open, give it the argument std data classes, we can see that it's going to give me a histogram. This isn't a very interesting histogram. Uh, you know, we have uh, the US total throwing us way off because it's so much bigger than the rest of them. Uh, but you can see that that's a useful way to subset data frames. You can also subset data frames by row and column. So let's say we just want to look at the first row of the data frame. We would do it as follows, STD data, and then square bracket open. We're going to type the row we want to look at, in this case, row one, and then the column we want to look at, all columns. We can use nothing there, so just one comma space, and you don't even need the space there. It's nice to have it for format. We're generally going to try to put a space after the commas we use here. Close that bracket off. Here we have the first row. It's Alaska with five... 1,739 cases of chlamydia in 2011. Or we can look at just the first column of the data frame that we're going to do with a open bracket, comma, space, and a 1. And that'll give us the ranks, which go 1 to 18 NA and then 19 to 50. Not terribly interesting to look at there. But those are some very basic ways to get around and understand data frames. Using that dollar sign with a column name is probably going to be the thing you should take away from this most. Otherwise, you need to remember how to index data frames with that square bracket and that comma. You can also pull up individual data values as opposed to whole rows or whole columns at once. So value 1, 1 is going to be 1. That's a rank. Value 1, 2 should be Alaska. Let's take a look here and make sure. There it is. You'll notice Alaska is a factor variable. We'll get to those in a later video, but it's, uh, it's right there. We can look at it.
Those are the basics. We'll get more complicated as time goes on. I just wanted to make sure you are comfortable with data frames before we got too deep into the data analysis in the next few videos. Again, my name is Ed, working for my bring back. Thoroughly appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos. Thoroughly hopeful that you're learning something and thoroughly confident that you can't help but be learning something watching this.